Welcome to the November 20th special meeting for superintendent search planning workshop. If you can do me a favor and silence your cell phones and then join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, just a point of uh, housekeeping for your microphones if you can lean forward to speak into them then MCTV can pick it up a little bit better um, but with that Mr. Hatfield can you take roll please yep uh, President McFarland is not here Vice President Rausch here Secretary Hatfield is here Treasurer Lauterbach here Member Blazy here Member Ringgold here Member Horwitz present All right, we have a quorum. Item number two, a request to address the board regarding superintendent search process. I have two names on the list. Um, I don't, are they for the special meeting? Yes. Okay, Renita. Good evening, Renita Bonadies. At the last special meeting, I discussed whether the October 10th special meeting really followed the Open Meeting Act? The president stated that the answer is yes. So I put in a FOIA request to see what communications exist to support the claims made at the past two meetings. My request was for all communications containing the words October 10, OCT 10, Special Board of Education meeting or special meeting from October 6 to the 25th, from email, written documents, or any other social communication source. The only information I received in response were two copies of each of the FOIA requests that I submitted, and one of those never even contained any of those terms, and the other was a copy of a document titled Midland Public Schools Boards of Education Superintendent Search Subcommittee Meeting. Note it was not titled as a special public meeting, just a subcommittee meeting on October 10th. There's no other communication about this supposedly special meeting that was open to the public. No emails between board members, no emails to an administrative person to put up a post about a special meeting on October 10th. And as I stated last month, there is nothing on the MPS website that even comes up as a special meeting on October 10th if you do a search. Interesting though, I sent an email to the FOIA coordinator asking why I did not receive the agenda and information about the meeting held on Wednesday, October 10th, since my FOIA request asks for special meetings as well. I also sent several emails to the interim superintendent and mentioned October 10th. All of these contain information that would fall within the parameters of my FOIA request. So if these emails did not get included, what else was not included in my request? Were there interchanges about how to cover the fact that it was never made public? It doesn't feel like I had a very accurate fulfillment of my request. As was stated at the two previous meetings by my husband Joe and me, there was a claim that October 10th meeting was held and followed Open Meeting Act requirements. The evidence does not support this on multiple levels, but we know that we can take you to court and have our plenty of legal coverage by your, cover, your insurance policy paid for with our tax dollars to defend yourself. You're obviously willing to take that chance. We're just looking for honesty from MPS and our elected public servants. Is that really too much to ask? Thank you. I'll note again that the uh, posting was on the front door. I triple checked when I walked into the meeting, subcommittee and it was posted. So next up is Joe Bonadies. Greetings. Let me start by saying I agree with the choice you made of Hazard Young and Atia as the search firm for the October 23rd special meeting. 
At the beginning of that meeting, President McFarland gave my wife a very flippant reply to her request inquiries into the appropriateness of the September selection at the subsequent sub, uh, subcommittee meeting. This caused me to take a, take a deeper look into the new Thrun bylaws you adopted last year. I was amazed to learn that you have exempted yourself from the Roberts Rules of Order, which were part of the previous NEOLA bylaws package, see section 0161. This explains by when, when President McFarland looks over at John Lauterbach, a noted Roberts Rules parliamentarian, he says, I don't know, because you removed the old overriding rules for, the sm for a new small package. The pack a package Mr. Sharrow clearly described as protecting the board better, sort of like the new public comment intimidation paragraphs. Which gets me to the larger point, and I will point to your new Thrun bylaws, section 2502, which states, quote, the agenda may be amended by the board at a board meeting by majority vote of the members serving on the board, unquote. So at the September meeting when Vice President Phil Rausch calmly said, I'd like to make a motion to have a meeting that was out of order by your own bylaws as he went for, from an update or de facto for information section to a for action event. You did not vote to open the agenda and ironically your meeting minutes don't even mention that it would be an open meeting as Mr. Lauterbach initially and Ms. Ringgold in final shaping of that motion specifically requested. Now I'm not gonna go back and invalidate the, you're not gonna go back and invalidate the contract that resulted from that process. However, the next time you want to beat the public up about uh, that's not in our bylaws, some of us might not take you seriously. I wish the search sub team, Hazard and Company, and the board good luck in getting a new superintendent. I look forward to public uh, the public having an opportunity to provide input into that process. While you are beginning the process, I might mention that it is possible that America has achieved maximum wokeness and we will be entering the other side of that curve consider the Ibram X. Kendi fiasco in Boston as an example. Given this, I would like to see fiscal responsibility be the number one criteria for the next superintendent for the sake of sustaining the basics. When the government stops printing money, MPS will need to make some hard decisions. A large DEI and SEL staff may be a luxury you cannot afford. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? request wish to address the board thank you so we will move into um, item three which is a superintendent search planning session so um, with that we'll open it up to our guests from hazard young and associates can you hear me okay yes Okay, great. So, first of all, um, thank you for uh, having this meeting tonight so we can start talking about the search process. And I don't, is Serena there yet? Not yet. I don't okay, so sorry. she is having all kinds of difficulties on her way there. She ran into a, a number of detours and I believe an accident or two. She's not, was not in the accident, um, but it's taken her a lot longer than anticipated. She should arrive any second. So we're gonna get started though. And um, we've got a lot to cover tonight. So, um, again, my name is Mike Ritchie, and um, I'm going to be your lead uh, associate on the search. And when I say lead, um, I I'm kind of your, your, your point of contact, um, but you can certainly reach out to either Serena or I. It, it doesn't matter. Um, my main responsibility was to get the proposal sent in and do the presentation. Uh, we work as a team, and we... we uh, take all the work and we split it evenly. So we're both going to be very heavily involved. So I think you have the planning notes in, in front of you or the agenda in front of you. And before we even start with um, that, um, Stacy is on and Stacy is the person responsible to um, put together and draft the one page recruitment flyer. And I think we have a pretty good draft, but before we release that to uh, any of the other associates uh, or take it to any conventions or conferences, we wanted to make sure you are okay with what, what you have in front of you. And I think you have a copy of that in front of you as well. 
the timeline, we will change the timeline accordingly after we go through everything tonight. But as far as the body of the uh, flyer, the, the paragraphs there, the dashboard there, um, do you have any questions or concerns about what you're looking at? Well, we have time to comment on the job description. Do you want comments on that right now, or are you just talking about the flyer? We're just talking about the flyer. Okay. We're going to go through the posting as well once Serena gets there. She's here. Serena's here. All right. Hi, Mike. Welcome. <laughs> hey. Does anybody have any questions about the flyer? I don't have questions per se about the flyer. I think some of my questions about the posting will may alter the contents of the flyer because yeah. they mirror each other. So I, mm -hmm. I think when we get to the posting, that's probably when I'll speak up about some of that. Okay. So no, no other questions on the flyer itself. No. <laughs> okay. Not at this time. Great. Okay. So. The, the number one item I want to discuss before we even start talking about the posting, um, if you if you can turn to the timeline, which is on the last page. So you're in a, with December coming up with, for focus groups. I guess I want to get the board's advice here. Um, do you think we should push the focus groups into January? And if we did that, that's going to push everything back a month, which we're still in great shape. But we need to determine when those focus groups are going to take place before we can move on to any of the other, of the other timeline, because it's all uh, related. And I know what, with, with the holidays and how hectic December can get, I know there's probably lots of programs and concerts at school. Um, I just want to get your take on focus groups in December versus January. When are final exams? December. 20th, 22nd. 20th, 21st, and 22nd. No, 19, 20, 21. December. December. I don't have any problem pushing it out further. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. trying to complete this by the end of February, I, I don't think is yeah. realistic at this point. I think we need more time. No, it, it will push everything back one month. Yeah. Okay. I, I like the idea. Yes. I like the idea of pushing to January just to give us more time to even let the community know that we're forming focus focus right. groups. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and I know you had a speaker up earlier. Um, there is going to be a lot of uh, community engagement and a chance for the community to participate in uh, the forums, community forums, the focus groups. Um, so we're going to uh, really yeah, get the word out. And I, another reason I, I do like January is the fact that it will give people more time to uh, get uh, events on their calendar as well. Great. Okay. So then you'll update the flyer as well? Yes. Okay. Yep. Everything is going to get pushed back, you know, one month. Um, and as far as I'm going to go right kind of in the order here. Um, with the um, handout you have in front of you. So we always, we always develop a board portal link and that link is going to be live after tonight. And so you'll be able to go into the board portal and um, as we draft our documents, they're going to be placed into that board portal. So if you do have any um, trouble getting into the portal, um, Stacy is the one who set that up, so you'll be able to contact her and we'll be able to get you um, in the portal if you have any any issues. Sometimes when you don't use a school email, uh, it can create a little bit of a problem with uh, logging into the portal. So we just want to make sure you can all log in. So once we um, finish up here over the next week or so, I'm going to have you try to log in to make sure you can get in. And if you can't, just shoot us an email and we'll make sure we get that corrected. We always design or draft a Zoom link as well. So you can see the Zoom link there. We'll use that link um, for potential focus groups. We'll do a blended model in person and Zoom. Um, but we use that, that link for your, for your search. 
and then you can see we've got board contacts uh, listed, and then we have other individuals who I'll be working closely with. Um, Sarah has been great work, working with her so far, and so um, we'll be doing a lot of communicating uh, back and forth. And then you can see the um, HYA team who's been assigned um, to the search as, as well. Uh, the agreement is signed and completed, so that's, that's ready to go. And then the one thing that we'd like to remind the boards about is, is just the confidentiality. So as these applications start coming in, uh, we need to make sure we keep those uh, names confidential until it's time to release uh, information uh, to the public. So we want to make sure that um, the people that apply um, understand that the name is not going to be going to be released. So. With that said, we're going to get into the uh, posting, and then we're going to after. Well, let me take that back. Let's 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 keep going and try to get some of these dates ironed out, and then we can get into into the posting. So the first task after tonight is um, Serena or I will contact you, and we're going to start setting up that individual board uh, interview. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes, and normally it's a phone call or a Zoom, but we're going to be interviewing uh, all board members, um, and we're going to focus on, again, those strengths of the district, what the challenges are of the district, and then what characteristics you're looking for in your next uh, superintendent. Um, as far as focus groups, you can see we have a number of focus groups listed. So this is where the board can kind of brainstorm and Serena can kind of jump in here and kind of um, take over with this, this piece of the meeting. Um, what focus groups would you like to see that we don't have uh, listed uh, within that list or do you want to cross any of those off as well? Mike, before we jump into number nine in the focus groups, can I just go back to number eight? First of all, let me appropriately say good evening to everyone and thank you for my tardiness. Um, 23 is its own animal, and then I got on yes. 10 and it was a whole nother animal. So I'm just glad that I made it here safely, but it's nice to meet you all in person. I know you know a little bit about me, but it's good to be home. I got a chance to tell my parents I was coming to Bidlin and they, they had five people for me to go see. I said, no, not tonight. So <laughs> maybe the next trip, um, but it is good to see everyone. And um, I wanted to just go back to number eight and just ask, is there, are there any board members that would prefer not to do Zoom? They would prefer a phone call. You're all okay. I personally prefer Zoom, so if you're okay with that, all right. Second question I want to ask about scheduling the meetings, and Mike it interrupted me, but I think we were still going to try to schedule the board interviews during the month of December, correct? Yes, that, okay. that is correct. Okay. Because we, we can't develop that leadership profile report until the survey is actually done, all the focus groups are done, and all the board interviews are done as well. So another thing, too, we should, we should talk about um, as we get into these focus groups, we decided to push the focus groups back into January. What about the survey? The survey will need about a two-week window. Would you prefer to do the survey in December or January as well? And he's talking about number 10, the online survey. Off of oh, are they off of yours? Okay. So I think you're referring to eight on our list, but uh, where it says online survey, yeah, right. yes. Is there a will of the board to do the online surveys sooner? If we push the focus groups to January? If the focus groups are pushed. Can we leave the survey open longer? Is there any benefit to doing that? Because I, I note that you had it open for two weeks. But. I, we can I, certainly leave it open. We can, we can leave it open longer. Yeah, I don't think there's any drawback to leaving it open longer. I think sometimes when people know that there's a longer date, though, they just <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wait longer to actually get it done. But I think as long as we do appropriate reminders and all of your ways in which you communicate to the public, we should be okay. Stay with December and spread them out a little bit. Okay. 
So the stakeholder interviews slash focus group slash forums will be January 11th and 12th. And then Zoom interviews the week of December 11th or January 11th. I'm on the I'm on the time frame. Yeah, I don't think we actually decided what dates in January. No. Those no, were December we did, dates. We did not. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we need to. <laughs> yes. So we're bumping. Sorry, we're going to bump up the HYA survey ahead of those stakeholder interviews. Is that what we're saying? So that will be December fourth through fifteenth. Will be the online survey, and then we need to move those stakeholder interviews down into January and pick the week that we're. Gonna that would be them. correct. Okay. Yes. But we were going to add an additional week to the survey, correct? Correct. Do you still want the survey open on the 4th, and then are we going to close it? When do you want it closed? My opinion, you could just go right up to fall break. It might just make, yeah, it might just make people remember. They have yeah. to do it before so fall break is over. Yeah. Yeah. Break. yeah. What was the closing date on the, on the survey? The 20th. September 20th? Correct. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Before we start talking about um, which focus groups the board would like to make sure that we um, interview, my only recommendation when we choose dates is that we choose backup dates for the lovely Michigan weather that we sometimes can't predict <clears throat> because those will be face-to-face. You want two dates in January and then a, maybe a week later. Have yeah, two have two a, like a backup date, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just for our school calendar, note that the 15th is MLK Day, and then so that's just a PD day for staff and students are out. And then the 16th, I believe there's a board meeting. Um, so I would propose maybe like the 17th, the 18th, and then the 24th, 25th is backup. Wednesday, Thursday, if that works for you, Serena. Mm -hmm. well, so the, the board will not have to be involved in focus groups at all? Right. So your your schedule won't matter as far as when those focus groups are because you will not uh, have to participate in focus groups? Okay. Those are just dates we will be in the district, so we want to make sure we avoid conflicts that you might have district events going on. So, and, and I can tell you, for me, uh, Serena, the week of um, January uh, 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th will not work. We will be at the Milwaukee, the Wisconsin State School Board Convention um, within our booth and recruiting again as well. We'll actually be recruiting for this job uh, at, 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 in Milwaukee. Can we go the week before that? Okay. Yeah, the, you know, I do like the 9th, 10th, 11th. Yeah, right after. What day do you guys come back for? Uh, Third, okay, yeah, so maybe the, the week of the, the week before that. That's perfect. And what days did you throw out? I turned my phone calendar off because my phone will start. I have four kids and a grandchild, so my phone will start doing things. So, <laughs> so I so turned the, it off. The 8th is a Monday, but it, okay. it, it's up to you as to what. Okay, sometime the week of the 8th. So there, you don't see any conflicts that week, from what you can tell? Because then Mike and I can... Avoid the eighth, but the rest of that week should be okay. Okay. So we'll maybe shoot for the ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Okay. We can do. We can do a. Normally for a search, we will do anywhere between twelve and twenty focus groups. Typically, we'll do more or less at your at your will, whatever you um, recommend that we do. And I'm assuming the ninth is a Tuesday. Okay, Can, then I'm going to prefer the 10th and the 11th just so the board knows. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that, that helps a lot to have a three day window in there. And yeah. Is Sarah, pre is Sarah present? Yes. 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 <clears throat> so once we start um, coming up with all the different groups, 
Um, I will work closely with Sarah in putting that schedule together. Um, it, it really takes a lot of coordinating. Um, and then, so typically for the staff, we'll do, you know, we'll look at what time that dismissal time is. Let's just say it's 3.30 is a good time. So we'll, we don't want the staff to have to, you know, come back. So 3.30, 4 o'clock, whatever time um, the, the students leave is usually the best time for staff for the face-to-face. -face. We will also do at least one, if not two, uh, Zoom opportunities for the staff as well. And those Zoom focus groups, they do not need to be, they probably will not be the 9th, 10th, or 11th, because when we're there, we're going to focus on those face-to-face -face focus mm -hmm. groups, and we won't have enough time to do the Zoom, Zoom ones at that time as well. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, just so you know, we'll be in contact setting these up. Okay, so looking at, Serena, you can go ahead and just sure. kind of go through that list. So let's just take a look at the list. Um, there are a group of recommended um, subgroups. We've already talked about board members meeting with them individually. Are there any, just off the, looking at the glance, groups that you want to cross off? We could start there. Or that you don't feel like represent this community or need in this community? Maybe because it doesn't even exist in the community. For example, like private school representatives, do you have those that you wish for us to include? Yeah. Okay. Clergy associations? Okay. Of course, we would probably want to meet with your government leadership. Are you thinking of anything that may be omitted from the list? Yeah, that's what we're thinking about. Okay. And we don't see anything there. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming that with service or community groups, you'd include local nonprofits that may support our students and their families. Absolutely, yes. And we would need to identify if there are key ones that you would like to make yeah. sure. Then yeah. I assume with the staff and students, we just get a really good cross-section of the different student groups and whether it's CTE or science or... Zoom Absolutely. Or yeah, this is where Sarah's help and the principal's help yeah. in identifying, you know, helping us make sure that we have a, a very diverse group of students. We want to make sure that we capture all of the different voices and that any voices that want to be heard are inclusive in the process. Yep. I, I just, as we're reviewing this again, I, uh, I see you have a bullet point for former board members, but I don't see former administrators. Hmm. Um, former administrators may have a, va a valuable insight on expectations for a superintendent. We can certainly add that. Mm-hmm. Were there any they crossed off? No. No. Okay. Well, along those lines, John, should, are we thinking teachers or any interested teacher present or past? Do we need to make a note about former teachers? Well, having done this on the other side as a a superintendent. <laughs> um, sometimes that group comes in the community forum. They, okay. it, it's a kind of a broad sector of people that have had relationships with the district in different times. And so that tends to be a good group to kind of catch others that you may have. You know, I've even had people come back to the community <laughs> to be a part of the conversation. So I don't know what your th thought is about that, Mike. Yeah, they they would normally come to the uh, community forums uh, in the evening. Um, but if, if you have a, you know, some districts have maybe a group of retired, mm -hmm. an actual group, mm -hmm. um, that would be a great. If, if you had that, that would be a wonderful uh, focus group, even if it was like you know, a noon one or early afternoon or something where this group gets together. Um, 
again, every district is different with that. So, but if you have that, yeah, we should definitely add add it mm -hmm. to it. And the other thing too with uh, with the staff, we do want to do separate focus groups for your certified staff versus mm -hmm. your support versus your support staff. Um, support staff sometimes don't like to open up in front of the uh, uh, the certified staff. So we want to make sure we give them their own um, their own times as well. What about a foundation? Do you guys have a foundation? Many. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, <laughs> okay. The, so. w when you say, do you guys, do you mean the district? The district. Or the yeah, no, the district. district. Oh, okay, but there's a community <laughs> foundation, right? Of course, we would get. Yeah, we'd grab them and the leaders. Okay. Yeah. Some districts actually have a district found foundation. So yeah, thank you for that distinction. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Any other thoughts? Okay, Mike, I think we're ready to move on. And of course, we can go back to this if there's something that just jumps up and you guys remember that you want to add it. Um, I think that takes us to number of slated candidates. So, yep. so for the candidates, um, normally what we would do, let me get to the right page here. So depending on the application pool, um, you're going to have anywhere from I'm I'm six to twelve um, candidates that that we want to definitely bring forward, and it, let's just say we have twelve that are in the top tier. So then when we have that meeting. Um, It'll be our job to work with you to, to narrow that down to six and no more than eight. Uh, I don't think you should interview more than eight. Normally, we try to interview six, um, but if you have a really, really strong pool, you may be forced to interview eight. Um, have 12, 13 in that tier one. Um, that mm -hmm. night that we uh, bring the slate to you, we will work with you to narrow that down to your, your, your top six, to your top eight uh, for that first round of interviews. So... Going back to the timeline then, so pushing everything back, we had the week of January 22nd for the uh, presentation of the slate, that would get pushed back to the week of February 22nd now. So looking at that week on the calendar, I'm going to minimize my screen so I can see my calendar. So looking at somewhere around February 21st, 22nd, is there any date in there that would work for the board? Would it work to do a special meeting before the board meeting on the 20th? It takes about an hour normally to do the slate. Yeah, that's a good, good catch, Jen. So the the 19th is a day off for the district, yep. but it's the 20th, Brian, any issues? So we have a board meeting scheduled on the, at 7 p.m. on the 20th. So we would okay. propose meeting at like maybe 6 to do the presentation mm, mm -hmm. of, the, of the slate. Prior to your regular board meeting. Mm -hmm. February 20th? Correct. Good. Okay, then the first round of interviews. So after we, pre after we present the slate, then we'll have to contact the individuals um, that they've been selected for an interview. So now we're looking at probably the week of the 27th for that first round of interviews. And, and normally that would be two nights. You do three or four uh, per night. And Mike, we're still in February? Yes. February 27th? We're yes. now talking about the yeah, last, last week. The last week in February. Starts with the 26th. Mm -hmm. Does not have to be back-to-back -back nights, but 
obviously, you know, one day in between is fine. So the 27th, 29th, or 27th and 28th. Just bear with us. I'm looking at Brian putting them up. Yeah, no problem. Take your time. And what's the length of time for those evenings? Long. So yeah. typically, <laughs> no, that's a, that, that's a great question. So for the first round of interviews, you really don't need to go longer than 45 mm -hmm. minutes. Um, and you're going to know probably with 10 minutes if you like the person or not. Mm -hmm. um, so normally what we would do is schedule on the hour. We would allow about 40 to 45 minutes per interview and then a break in between. Something in four hours maybe total for three candidates give your time so yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours, yeah 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 no more than I don't think what time do you typically start those meetings typically it's either five or six, six five six if we do the 27th I can't start till after six that just, that I, have, I have a conflict at seven starting at seven on the 27th so the 27th is out we do the 26, 28, 26, 28, starting at 6, or even, or 5, 30, 5, 30, 26, 28, starting at 5, 30, okay, did you get that, Mike? Got it. Okay. Perfect. Okay, then we get into the day in the district, so this is kind of a neat day, and again, um, the board has little involvement with this. Let's just assume we're going to have three finalists. They would each get one full day in the district. And this is, again, where um, the community will be involved, and we'll have meet and greets. The students will be involved. Uh, the staff will be involved again. And um, we'll do tours of the community. Uh, but they get a full day um, to be able to really see what what you have to offer and what uh, what the district looks like. So if we do that first round of interviews on the 26th and 28th, then normally we would push back to, it would be either the probably the week of March 4th, or you could go that following week of March 11th. I think it would be the following week because they would need to unless they would unless they have time to deliberate on the 28th they would need to move the slate down from the 6 to 8 to the 3 so what date Correct. what date would that happen on mike uh, normally it's the second night of the interviews after those interviews and most boards get it done um, that second night of the interviews i just added a couple hours to that night <laughs> That's why I asked the question Again, because that, 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 that's, that's a great point. It, it just depends on your slate. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we've had some where we've had so many good applicants, it was very, very difficult. In others, it was easy to get the six to three. So we're hoping we make your job difficult. Is what we're hoping, and, and you get a lot to choose from. So with that in mind, about, I think the visitation would. Is, is there a spring break in there anywhere in March? No, it's into March, early April. It's a week of the 25th. Yeah. So you got time. End of March. So you could go, you could go the week of March 11th then if you wanted to for the day in the district? I would just to give yourself time in case you decide not to deliberate that night of the 28th. So then... Then we add, yeah, and I don't know, if the, I don't think there would be any testing going on, so we kind of try to stay away from, you know, if there's testing in the district or anything of that nature. It's not that time. We don't want to disrupt students if, because they will, when they take their tours, they will stop in the classrooms as well. Probably not until April for testing, so I think we should be yep. okay. Ryan, anything in? My, my question is, who's involved in the day in the district? Would that be... Like one of us hosting, is it you hosting, is it a board member, is it Sarah putting it all together? It's a great question. Could Thank be you. Yeah. any so of the above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Serene and I will work with Sarah. We will put it all together. 
And I think I will send out to Sarah some sample days in the district that other districts have used that we put together. So where the board is involved is usually there's a lunch, and it's nice if one or two board members can take the candidate to lunch. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a dinner. Other, other times, it, it depends on the schedule, but it's so tight. Usually for dinner, they might just bring in sub sandwiches or something because it might only be a half hour break in there um, before those evening sessions start. Um, but we like to get them out into a restaurant for lunch and then we, we piggyback off of the lunch with a tour of the community. So let's just say, for example, from uh, 11.30 to 1 or from 12 to 1.30 would be a lunch and then the tour of the community at the same time. And then the morning time would be in the buildings? Correct. Mm -hmm. We'd be going into, going into the different schools, meeting with students, meeting with other groups that we identify as well. Um, usually they'll meet with a group of administrators. Again, at that 3.30 mark, they'll meet with staff. Um, then they'll meet with you know parents at 6 o'clock or community at 6 o'clock. There are other groups in there as well that, that might be a good fit to meet. Um, for example, if you have a very, very strong booster clubs, PTOs, um, sometimes we'll lump those together um, and they'll, they'll get, let's say, at you know, 5 o'clock, they'll get up a meet and greet and then at 6 o'clock will be the parents for community. But the board really does not have a lot of investment in the days of the district other than possibility of one or two board members taking out the candidates for lunch. The only other commitment I could see is the afternoon part where they might be touring the community. We would need someone that knows the community <laughs> to take them around. <clears throat> that could be another commitment from someone on the administrative team, perhaps. Phil, we can make those work. Just to kind of a, thinking about how this all spaces out, um, if we we have a regular, regularly scheduled board meeting on the 18th, um, does that, we, we still need a day in the district, then the final interview. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it says so, one, one night needed, that's one night for all three finals. Finalists, right? Correct. correct. Yes. Does it does it make sense to get that done before the March board meeting, or because if mm. they did the day in the district, the fourth, schedule the final round, interview the eleventh, and then be at March eighteenth board meeting with a identified superintendent. Not that they would start that quickly. You could. You could also. Well, first, as a bookend, I think it would be important to do it before spring break. So let's right. say that's the goal, right, before spring break, which is the week of the 25th. Right. Um, you could also hold a special board meeting for the purpose of selecting the final candidate, you know, as well. If you felt too rushed with that March 4th yeah. date right behind the three interviews. It's not impossible. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think broadly. If your candidate is coming from out of state and you have them here on the week of the 28th, then them turning back around and coming back for a three-day visit, potentially three or four days later, may not be doable, you know. Are they, when they're here for the day in the district, is that the same time block that they're doing the final round interview? Or do they actually have to travel here three times? So you get the first round interview. Again. They would have to because if you have three different days, you have, oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying after their day in the district, could they have their final interview on that day? Mike, would that work? I think what you described is like an evening meet and greet. Yeah. Yeah, yes and no. So <laughs> here's, here's, the, here's the deal. With, we, we've done them that way, but here's, here's the drawback, I guess. That would mean three three consecutive nights of three nights that week the board would have to meet so you'd mm -hmm. have three meetings that week because they would each get their day mm -hmm. it's a very 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 long day for the candidate mm -hmm. and i don't know if they would be they're on top of their game 
at 7 o'clock or 7.30 at night mm -hmm. after being in district for about 10 hours. Unless you're trying to see how much stamina they have. And then... <laughs> But yes, it has, it has been done. It, it has. It's not a nine-to-five job. And, and, and if you end up with out-of-state candidates, you might have to reconsider, you know. Um, but I think right now we should just try to plan that week of the 11th. For a day in the district. Mm -hmm. And then the week of the 18th would be the final. Final interviews, yeah. And selection. Yes. With a special board meeting. Perhaps, yeah. Because your board, if your board meeting is on the 18th, then it would have to be a special board meeting for you to. Bill, it's uh, it's 6:45, and, and I've I've got a meeting to go to at 7 o'clock, but I will be back for our regular meeting before yeah. I leave. Could I offer a couple comments on the posting? Did, did yeah, we, just, sure. Okay, um, I think we should include a salary range uh, in the posting. Mm -hmm. Um, when you compare our present or you know, Mike's compensation package according to the Michigan Public School Superintendent Compensation Database, uh, and, and I think Mike was pretty open about this, he, he knew he was undercompensated. I mean, he knew that if you look at comparable districts um, for you know, reasons that were his, um, he was low on the comps. Um, co districts that are comparable in size, comparable, comparable communities to Midland include Rockford, Granville, Portage, Grand Haven, and Zeeland, all of which have total compensation. And, and there's, they're all over the board in terms of what's salary versus what's pension and, and health insurance. Mm -hmm. But the total comp ranges from Zeeland at 323000 up to... Uh, Granville of 430, $430,500. Um, our superintendent is going to be the, the CEO of a $99 million a year enterprise. Um, Joe and Renita think it shouldn't be $99 million, <laughs> is what it is. If you went out into the marketplace and looked at what the CEO of a $100 million a year enterprise gets paid, it's more than $261,500, which we were paying Mike, and it is more in the, the 350, 375 range. Um, I think we should be bold and consider a, a significant bump in our salary range. And I also would like for us to at least discuss, I know we're not going to get to it tonight, but I'd like for us to at least think about a bonus structure um, may be included in that 375 that would be tied to key, key performance indicators or metrics that we would set tied to test scores, student achievement, whatever we might decide to incentivize the leader, uh, our new leader, to be bold and, and challenge the, the team going forward. So there's a couple of things for discussion after I'm, after I'm gone. The other thing is, uh, I think the, the posting itself is great. I think the way it describes the Great Lakes Bay region and our community is really good. The Midland Business Alliance, a couple of years ago, did a video. It's out on YouTube. Mm. Uh, I, I'd go to YouTube, but Dave's little uh, Wi-Fi security thing won't let me get there right now. <laughs> uh, um, and it, but it's, it's, it's fabulous. It, it describes our community beautifully, um, and it, it's... Uh, it, it, if we could embed the hyperlink the link. Mm -hmm. right in the, the posting, mm -hmm. so an interested applicant who maybe wasn't familiar with Midland could click on it, and it would go to the video. Um, I think it's, it's I, I, well, I don't know what it's called, but we can track it down and mm -hmm. the hyperlink. Oh, sure, I made note of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with yes, that. We, we, can, we can certainly do that. Okay. <coughs> so, Sarah, could, once you find that link, could you just email me that link? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so if I had to fill in a blank, would you say you're, you're recommending 350 to 400 is, is what that would be? Something or, similar. Or 350 to 375, yes. Okay, yeah. all right. And, and a number starting with a four does not bother me. Okay. So if that's what the group decides, certainly good with that. Are we on the job description now? Back a little while. Well, I just want to round out, make sure that we're all square on the calendar real quick. So we said... Final interview the week of 
final interview and selection like the 19th or 20th? Of March. Of March. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have a preference if it's 19 or 20? You want to just do it back to back? Board meet on the 18th and another one on the 19th? Let's have a night in between. Okay. March 19th and 20th. 18th and 20th. So Did I hear that? 18th and 20th. We'll have our regular scheduled board meeting on the 18th. Okay. And a special board meeting on the 20th. Okay. Correct. For final interviews. Okay. Okay, so the 20th. Mm hmm Got it. And then before we move on from the calendar, I just wanted to double check. I think we did we skip over the presentation of district leadership profile report? We, yeah, we did. I, I've got that circled to come back to it. We did. What it, can that so, have? Go ahead, Mike. So that takes about uh, maybe 20 minutes or so. It, so the report is, is, is going to be about 20 pages. And then we highlight your, your, your strengths and your challenges. And then the characteristics you're looking for in your next superintendent. We include comments. We give the students a separate section so you know exactly what the students uh, had to say. Um, that's done at a board meeting uh, in open session. So can that happen at the 16th? So I'm just looking at when the focus groups are now going to be the 9th, 10th, and 11th. It's going to take... Um, we, we can do it. It would have to be like early, early February, late January, or early February. You guys meet once a month or twice a month? Once a month. So it would probably have to be a special board meeting then the first part of February? Correct? What, what is your, what's your January board meeting date? What's your February board meeting date? January is the 15th or 16th, 16th, and then... February is the 20th, and 20th. we're doing the slate, so it would have to be before that. And I don't think January 15th is enough time? No, the 15th won't work because even though we're doing focus groups in 9th, 10th, and 11th, there could be some additional Zoom ones after that. Mm -hmm. And it does take about, uh, depends how quick we work, but at least seven days to write that report. So we would have to go a special board meeting like late January or early February. You could either do the 29th or the 5th. 29th of January or 5th of February, Mike? Um, 29th or 5th. It's, it's, I would say the 29th of January probably Forget would be better. Does that work for you? Yes. Let me just not look at my schedule yeah, they're here. Saying not the they're saying 29th. Okay. So let me. Yeah, 29th works. Mm -hmm. Let me read through all the dates to make sure I capture them correctly. So the <clears throat> individual board member interviews will be done sometime in December on a one on one basis. Mm hmm. The stakeholder interviews will be January 10th and 11th in district. Mm -hmm. The survey will be open December 4th through the 20th. Correct. Correct. The district leadership profile report will be January 29th at a special BOE meeting. Mm -hmm. Presentation of the slate of the board will be right before at 6 p.m. on February 20th, just before our regularly scheduled board meeting. The first round interviews will be scheduled February 26th and 28th at 5.30 p.m. each night. Mm -hmm. The finalist day in the district will be the week of March 11th. Mm -hmm. And then the final interviews will be March 20th. Correct. 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 So we will, on this path, we'll be done before we leave spring for break. spring break. Mm -hmm. All right. Before we
we move into the um, job description. Do we need a motion to extend the time past seven or are we okay? Um, okay, so we'll move into the job description then. You got posting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what I heard so far on the job posting is we're going to get a hyperlink uh, of, of a great video. We'll put that. We'll embed that in the posting as well on our website as well. Um, you you want the salary range included, so we can't post this position until you have that salary range. And I, I like the salary range posted because the people in, that are applying, they know exactly what that range is, and there's no surprises, and it's a much easier to negotiate that contract at the end of the day when they know the range up front. And can you come up with, can you come up with a range in discussion now, or do you, you need to wait for that? I just want to clarify the um, trustee that left. He was talking about total compensation, total. correct? Yes. But yes. the on the posting would only have the base salary. Okay, I just want to be clear. Good point, Serena. Well, my question is, who can get us the salary data for? Um, what we're looking at. Can you guys get us salary data? For the districts for the, that he... For, well, for the, uh, like, get us all the equivalent district salary data that we can use for consideration. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to go. Yeah, I think we need to get that comparison. Mm -hmm. group. Well, I think that makes us more competitive, too, if it's comparative. To yep. Did you all want to start with the list that he mentioned, or... Okay. Yeah. If... Sarah can <laughs> well, should we get Shoot her or the peer group that we compare ourselves to, for like the elite scores. peer group yeah. for test scores, and get that to them? Yeah. And then in that that study, can it include um, deferred comp and kind of a breakdown as to, or is that part more negotiated? Well, all contracts are public, so I mean. You could also just pull the contracts, and it get, you can see how much of it is base salary, how much is of it is you know benefits. Um, it's public information, so it wouldn't be hard to to be able to grab to grab that information for you. Okay. And then looking at the description, you talk about uh, Midland being in the Great Lakes Bay region. Uh, which consists of consists of six communities. Uh, we should add Isabella um, and Mount Pleasant in that list because they're actually part of the Great Lakes Bay region. Is Birch Run technically Great Lakes Bay region? Are they outside of that sign? I think, it, I think it is. And I think it like Isabella County and Mount Pleasant are technically part oh, of yeah, the absolutely. technically Isabella. part of the region. Yep. Yeah. I just need to go back. Um, Mike, is there a date that the posting needed to be completed by? No, but I mean the sooner we get it posted the better. I'm just wondering from the will of the board when you all would have an opportunity then to come back together to consider the base salary. I was just wondering if we can say some, just bear with me here because I'm throwing out an idea, but could we say like the 10th to 25th percentile of the comparative districts or something like that? Number. Numbers are better for the person no, no, no. that applies. Well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that the board would 
You would turn what we said into a number, but. So you wouldn't have to come back together yeah. for the oh, number. Oh, I got you. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. Can I just come back together? Yeah, it's probably easiest. Yep. Okay. I think so. Yep. Yeah, once we have that data from you, we can reconvene the board and okay. reconvene a special meeting. And you, were you going to get us a list of school districts? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. You're about to shut down, so we're about to, <laughs> we're about to boost you back up. <laughs> anything else we need to cover soon? So anything else in the posting you want added? I mean, so some some boards say you know doctorate preferred, doctorate required. Um, any uh, experience as a superintendent? I, I hate putting some of those parameters in because you don't want to eliminate you know a, a good candidate who maybe is maybe they've been an assistant superintendent but not a superintendent. Or they've been a deputy of a large district somewhere else. And right. Yeah. Administrative responsibilities. Is it that I mean, we could put something about having administrative duties mm -hmm. responsibilities? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I mean, I think we want an advanced degree. I don't think we need to specify what type of advanced degree. So, advanced degree, licensed superintendent in Michigan. And some administrative experience. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I guess licensed. Superintendent of Michigan or the... Or equivalent. Or equivalent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that eliminate... Actually, there is no... Super yeah. in, in the state of Michigan, you have to have the administrative certification. There is no superintendent license in the state of Michigan. So we would... I would get the exact wording for you, Mike, but they have to have certain certification. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think we should eliminate any assistants or associates or deputies. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, so Correct. What about a CEO of a company? I do not want to limit that person. So, Sir, Serena, are you saying that a, oh, I think I just turned myself up, that a superintendent in Michigan has to have a certain certification? They do, or they have to qualify for, okay. right? So they would just, like, let's say, just the example that he gave, let's say you chose someone who was a CEO of a company or came from a different alternative background, they would just have to apply for a certification. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not in labor intensive, but if they, for some reason, weren't eligible because they haven't, they haven't met certain coursework, let's just say, and the state of Michigan would give them two years to do that, and then multiple associations, including the one that I work for, have like programs that they could enroll in to get the certification. So it, it would not completely eliminate someone from you, your consideration. So certification eligible. Correct. <laughs> we do have employees in Midland, so I think it's okay. Okay. I think we just want to double check, and I, I, I'm kind of a stickler on this sort of stuff, uh, that we have the proper names for Dow Gardens and Whiting Forest and just make sure that we're using those oh. full names. Where exactly are you looking so I can make sure so that So it's I... the end of the Third fourth period. paragraph. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Uh huh. Yeah. I think one of the other things that I would like to see in the additional highlights regarding Midland Public Schools is that we have a um, a collaborative consortium for uh, CTE, working with the, um, other local districts for career tech stuff.
Okay, thank and you. When you add, and when you update this, you'll get us the proper language about the certification and, the certification and all that. Yes. And what that all means? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we want to limit um, the references or letters of recommendation to, say, individuals that, or at least one from an individual that they've worked with within the past year or something along those lines? A direct supervisor? I don't even know that I'd be that specific. Are, are you thinking that you want it to be something recent, more recent? I'm just thinking somebody that they've actually worked with recently as opposed mm -hmm. to, yeah, it's a current letter, but it's somebody that they worked with 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I guess if they submit that, that that's how it goes. I mean, I think that one of the things that you can be assured of is that Mike and I will do our due diligence and a lot of background and all of that informal gathering of information as well. If all the letters are from 10 years ago, red flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will call people they don't list. I mean, Correct. Obviously we're gonna, the people they list, like that, we know they'll give them a glowing reference. Correct. Any final things to look at for HYA? Uh, 15, residency expectations. <coughs> it is, is of it? my Will? opinion that the superintendent should live in the district. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Is that it for today? I think so. Okay. Um, should we choose right now the when we reconvene? <coughs> well, can you do a motion because that wasn't action item for the day? Can you do a motion to reconvene to do it that? Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why Sarah <laughs> runs the district? And she keeps us, on, keeps us on our toes. Um, so we're, we're looking into December, right? December fourth or fifth? For the people on Monday or Tuesday? Fourth is FFO. Five to seven. Seven right after. I can't do the fourth. Okay. Sorry. So that's work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seven. Sure. Okay. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Then. I will move that we reconvene on Tuesday, December fifth, at seven p.m. to finalize the job description for the new superintendent. Motion by Hatfield, support by Ringel. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? With that being our last action item, um, I accept the motion to adjourn the special meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah, we'll be, I'll be in touch with you then, and, and I'll, I'll get all this cleaned up. Um, I'll be in touch with you to start looking at um, the focus groups, the, that schedule as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Serena, drive safely. Yes. <laughs> we actually have another meeting tonight, so I'm going to try to get there, Mike. <laughs> okay, and you know what? You know what? Don't don't worry about it because th there's no Zoom link. Okay. They're only going to do a live stream. So Shut I'm solo. <laughs> I'm on my own. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. I'll talk to you in the morning. Yep, drive safely. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Serena.